हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट स्टोडेंजर्स टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट वेव इक्वेशन वेर इन दट फैक्टर ऑफ टाइम वॉज नॉट टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन इन दिस क्लास वील बी स्टडिंग अबाउट स्टोडेंजर्स टाइम डिपेंडेंट वेव इक्वेशन सो स्टे ट्यून दिस वुड बी द मोस्ट ईजिएस्ट डेविएशन फॉर योर लेक्चर्स टू बिगेन Let's start with Schrodinger's time-independent wave equation. Now, just to recall, in last class we studied about Schrodinger's time-independent wave equation. So, basically, what is the difference between Schrodinger's time-independent equation and non-independent or maybe dependent equation? So, basically, what is the difference between the Schrodinger's time-dependent wave equation and time-independent wave equation? Well. the difference is very similar as the name suggest in one equation we won't be taking time as a factor and in second equation we'll be taking time as the factor again recollecting the previous derivations result we would be using that result to derive this this again becomes an important question for your university exams so stay tuned again this would be the most easiest derivation that you'll ever find in your books now to begin what again why schrodinger came into picture well the reason is same hypothesis by de broglie had no mathematical support so schrodinger came into picture to give de broglie's hypothesis a mathematical support and hence schrodinger's wave equation came into picture now we know that energy can be given by this equation e is equals to h nu when nu is nothing but as frequency so this frequency can be written as 1 upon t so here i have replaced nu with 1 by t so the equation becomes e is equals to h by t now instead of t i have written 2 pi by omega because we all know that time period is nothing but as 2 pi by omega taking omega on the numerator side we get omega h upon 2 pi now again as you see we have h upon 2 pi which will substitute as h cross again an important point to note some authors don't prefer to write h cross while some author prefer to write h cross so it does not make any considerable change but you follow one always do remember h cross is nothing but as h upon 2 pi that is called either a standardized planck's constant or a normalized planck's constant now this proved the final result that energy is nothing but as h times omega or h cross times omega again a wave equation as you know in the earlier class as well we have represented in the form of psi which equals to e raised to i times kx minus omega t as you can see it has the x factor as well as the time factor now if you remember in time independent wave equation we took a differentiation with respect to x because we wanted to do with without the time now here we need the time and hence we'll be taking the differentiation with respect to time so the equation becomes d psi by dt why dt because now we want the derivation with respect to time it is time dependent wave equation so the equation becomes minus i omega e raised to i kx minus omega t again this part is same as psi so we'll be resubstituting this as psi and the first derivative becomes equals to minus i omega psi here we won't be taking the second derivative of time just a point of note you need to remember that now we know that energy as stated earlier is nothing but as h cross omega but now i have multiplied by psi on both the sides so it becomes e psi equals to h cross omega psi why because here in energy i had h cross omega so h cross omega here i have taken this h cross omega from left hand side to the right hand side so it becomes e phi upon h cross is equals to omega into psi now multiplying by minus i on both the sides it becomes minus i e psi by h cross equals to minus i into omega psi well why am i doing this the question is i want an equation which appears something similar which is here now as you can see i already have omega and psi here 
but I don't have minus i. So just to get that minus i, I have multiplied with minus i on both the sides. So far so good. Now, this equation is nothing but as d psi by dt. So in the equation where I am getting minus i omega psi, I have replaced this by d psi by dt. So basically now I get e psi is nothing but as minus h cross i. If you can see from here, I have taken this h on this side and this e and the denominator and of course minus side has not been shifted because I want an absolute value of e psi. This is the most critical step. So the value of e psi is nothing but as h cross upon i with a negative sign times d psi by dt. Again, we don't want this minus sign. So what we would be doing, we would be multiplying and dividing by iota on the numerator and denominator to eliminate the negative sign. Because we all know that i square is nothing but as minus 1. So here it becomes hi and at the denominator it is i square. So i square makes minus 1 and this minus and minus add multiply together to give you a positive sign and hence e phi is nothing but as hi times d phi by dt. This is nothing but as the simplified equation of e psi. Now, we remember this is the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Of course, we have studied this in the previous class. This is Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Now, the question would arise, why have I taken this equation? Why have I not taken the simplified equation? Well, if you want, you can take the simplified equation as well. We'll be just following the norms which have been done as per the university. So if you want to take the simplified equation, you can also proceed with that. But ideally, always consider this equation to be taken into consideration. We would be doing nothing except substituting the value of e psi with respect to time. So wherever you find e psi, here it is, I have substituted with h cross i d psi by dt which equals to this. Now again, doing some algebra to beautify the things, this is the actual equation of Schrodinger's time dependent wave. As you can see, there's a factor of time. So this is called as Schrodinger's time dependent wave equation. Now, in three dimension, we already know that this is the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Now, performing an algebra, I have taken the 8 pi square m upon h square into e minus u psi on the left hand side, so it becomes minus. Now, d square psi equals to this. I have splitted the bracket. Why? Because I am known with the value of e psi. Now, this is the term that I have taken on the left hand side and thus it becomes an equation which looks like this. Now, taking 8 pi square m by h square common, we'll be getting minus h square upon 8 pi square m reverted l square psi. This is nothing but as Laplacian operator. As we studied in the previous class, this is nothing but as the Laplacian operator which is used for three dimensional spaces equals to this. Now, here the equation becomes something like this. This u square psi gets this 8 pi square m upon h square gets cancelled with 8 pi square m upon h square. So my e psi value, as I said, we want an isolated value of e psi, which becomes something like this. Now, this is nothing but as Hamiltonian operator. This is called as Hamiltonian operator. This is represented as h with a vector sign cap h square psi equals to e into psi. 
this is an hamiltonian operator so hamiltonian operator times psi is nothing but as e into psi this is the schrodinger's time dependent wave equation thank you so much for watching this video for more videos stay tuned with ekeda and subscribe to ekeda